Hello everyone. Welcome to the quick talk on the topic, the role of conventional comments in elevating our pull requests. I am Mouli Shuran, working as a full stack developer at Julimo. I was in charge of implementing this convention in my company. I also developed a Chrome browser extension uh, to help integrate uh, this convention into our workflow. So, as we all know, a pull request is a proposal to merge code changes from one branch into another. This is also the place where collaborates, uh, collaborators participate uh, to review the code change and give feedback through comments. Uh, as a developer, we deal with pull requests every day in our life, uh, either as an author or as a reviewer. Initially, uh, the tech team at Julima was uh, very small, but as the company grew, the tech team grew as well. We decided to implement best practices in all our software development process. At the same time, we identified that we were not uh, managing our pull requests efficiently. So we decided to do an audit, and we did an audit of all our pull requests in the previous four to five months. And we identified some challenges uh, that were happening repetitively. Let's look at the challenges. So the main issue we faced was having a clear communication between the author and the reviewer. So uh, a comment can be of any type. Uh, it can be a suggestion, it can be an issue, it can be a question, or it can be a thought, it can be anything. Understanding the type of comment is very important. Why? When the author understands the type of comment uh, left by the reviewer, then only he can decide what action he needs to take to resolve the comment and then merge the PR. Without understanding the type of comment, taking the necessary action is difficult for the author. Let's look at an example. Here, the reviewer has left a comment. Uh, can we think of another approach for this? By just looking at this comment, this looks ambiguous. Why? It can be interpreted either as a suggestion or if the, or if the reviewer has identified any issue in the code change he reviewed, it can be interpreted as an issue by the reviewer, but not necessarily by the author, because he is just reading this comment. Can we think of another approach? So he can't decide which action he needs to take to, uh, to resolve this comment and then further merge the PR. So what he does, there will always be comments back and forth between the author and the reviewer to just identify the type of comment he made, and then he needs to decide what action he needs to take. So this leads to loss of time. And when this, when uh, back and forth comments happens, it always leads to frustration between the author and the reviewer. Let's look at another challenge we faced, prioritizing the actions uh, we need to take to resolve those comments. Not every comment left by the reviewers needs an immediate action. If the action doesn't bring much impact or value, then uh, we don't need to prioritize that action. So the, uh, the prioritization always should focus on the impact and the value it brings out. Let's look at an example. Uh, the, here, the reviewer has left the icon is not aligned with the title. By just reading the comment, we can make out the type. It's an issue pointed out by the reviewer. But does it warrant an immediate action? Maybe yes, maybe not. Let's imagine the scenario where the code change was for an internal tool, used internally. It is not used externally. Uh, then, But the functionality of the code is, is, uh, is uh, required immediately. But we don't need to handle this issue because it's just an alignment on the icon, which is basic, uh, basically a design issue. So we don't need to fix this immediately. We can simply put a task and backlog, and we can fix this later. The main thing was uh, for the developers is to release the future, which is uh, acquired immediately. Let's look at another example. Here, uh, the reviewer has asked, can we optimize the query using exists instead of left join? Uh, comments dealing with optimization also needs additional information uh, that helps the author to prioritize his action. Not all optimization comment de deserves an immediate uh, action. Uh, another issue or challenge we faced was uh, not having constructive feedbacks. Feed all feedbacks should be constructive in nature. How you can make them constructive? You have to be specific, you have to be timely, you have to be positive, and you have to be understanding. Let's look at an example. Here, uh, the author might have seen an issue that uh, in the code change he reviewed. But instead of specifying the issue, he just asked, why did you make this change? Imag the author might have spent a lot of effort and time into creating the code change and creating the pull request. But when he sees this kind of comments, he, it, it will cause friction between the author and the reviewer. 
because when he reads this command he might think the reviewer has questioned his logical reasoning behind uh, this code change these kind of comments are not good to make so what is conventional comments conventional comments is a standard for formatting uh, uh, comments of any kind uh, in a review or in a feedback process this is developed by paul slaughter who is a front end uh, developer in gitlab so the format proposed by conventional comments is first you need to start with the label followed by the decorations and then the main subject of the command followed by a discussion so what's a label every command should be associated with a single label that signifies what kind of command the reviewer leaves then we have the decorations these are extra decorating labels that you can associate uh, with a command uh, you can have multiple decorations uh, in a command and these should be usually uh, surrounded by parentheses and should be separated by commas then the subject this is the main message of the command and in the discussion you can have supporting statements context reasoning or anything else to help communicate the why and the next steps to resolve the command so what are the labels suggested by the conventional comments these are just few uh, it can be a suggestion if you are giving a suggestion to the author you can put it under suggestion if you have found out an issue in the code change you can put it under issue or if you want to ask a question to the author you can put it as a question or if it's a very small change that is not necessarily a blocking then you can put it under nitpick or if you have a thought to do it in some other way you can uh, put it under thought and we have uh, other uh, labels as well so the decorations uh, you can use blocking non blocking if minor so if you want your comment to be resolved before merging the pr you can put it under blocking if it is non blocking you use non blocking if minor uh, if uh, the change the author needs to take is very minimal then you can use mi uh, if minor if he sees if minor in the command then he will work for a few minutes and see if he can resolve that then he makes the change else if it takes a lot of time he can uh, simply uh, resolve that command later on and like create a task and backlog to resolve that later so and uh, before uh, moving uh, so you can ask whether should i use these set of labels and decorations uh, it it is suggested by the conventional comments but not necessarily you should use the same labels and decorations you can decide with your team and you can design your own labels and decorations it's just for our own use so you can use any labels and decorations you want let's look at how we can rewrite the problematic comments we have we saw earlier uh, in a good formatted way for example earlier we had can we think of another approach for this so now uh, with a well formatted command you can introduce a label suggestion followed by a non blocking decoration and then the same command so when he when the author reviews this well formatted command he clearly identifies the what is the type of a command it is a suggestion and what action he needs to take he just have to think of another approach and since it is not block non blocking he can create a task in backlog or he if he has enough time and he doesn't have any other things to do like he can take a look at another approach for this and whether he has to do it now definitely not he can do it later let's look at this command earlier it was just asking can we optimize the query but now he added a label suggestion followed by a blocking decoration since he saw the blocking decoration the author will uh, think that he needs to optimize this query now before merging the pr so, uh, let's look at the uh, comment we saw for the constructive feedback so earlier it was just why did you make this change but now since he, he introduced the label issue and the blocking decoration it kind of forces the reviewer to put more thought and effort into writing this command so since he added issue he is going to point out the issue making this change will cause the other endpoint to fail and then he further follows it up with the discussion let's update the other other endpoint as well to not cause not, not cause any regression and he also says he is available for discussion so this review process in in uh, it changes into a mentoring session instead of causing friction by putting the earlier command if you well format the command and put more effort into your command then it kind of turns into a mentoring session between the author and the reviewer so how you can make your comments more interesting just by introducing emojis emojis are fun it's colorful and it improves readability how so if i associate each label decoration combination with an emoji i can just simply see the emoji and then i know what type of comment and uh, what type of action or if it's blocking or uh, non blocking i can easily understand just by looking at the emoji i am associating the siren with the, with the issue type 
So whenever I, I see a siren in my pull request, I know that there is an issue in the PR, and I need to make an immediate action to resolve that and then merge the PR. And same for the other. I, I associate a light bulb with the suggestion. I associate the question mark with the question type commands. So you can always associate a unique emoji with a label decoration combination. So how we can uh, well format our comments? Yes, that's the first type. You can manually type your label and decoration every time. Yes, it's a time consuming process and it's laborious. So what, uh, what are the other options that we have? We have, uh, we have some other tools to well format your comments. The first one is GitHub saved replies and we have some browser extensions as well. So let's look at how we can use GitHub saved replies uh, to implement the convention. So as we all know, we have, uh, we have the tool to save, uh, uh, save the replies in GitHub. So you go on your settings and you create a new saved reply. You can give it a title. For example, if, you, if I want to uh, put issue blocking, I will create a title blocking issue and, uh, and then I will save the label followed by the decoration. So whenever uh, in the comment, in when I want to make a comment in the PR, I will click on the arrow mark icon on the comment box and then it will display all the list of saved replies that I have predefined in the GitHub. So you can uh, select the label decoration, whichever you want by clicking this title and then it will be inserted. We tried using the GitHub saved replies, but we faced a bit of problems with this. I will explain what, what are them. Um, so when you want to, you put, for example, first you want you put a suggestion blocking, but if you want to change it to an issue uh, non-blocking, then you have to delete what you wrote, and then you have to again click on the icon and then select the uh, saved replay you want. So this causes some friction. So we started trying the browser extensions available in the market. For example, this browser, browser extension works well. Uh, you can select the label you want from the first dropdown, and you can select the decorations you want from the second dropdown. And if you want to change, you can simply select the different uh, label and the decoration, and it will automatically replace the pre-selected one. But these kind of browser extensions have certain limitations as well. For example, by simply changing the theme of my GitHub page, uh, it's, it becomes unusable, a bit of less unusable, because the label and the decorations gets hidden. So there are certain limitations in the tools uh, already that was already existing. So what I did, I just developed a Chrome extension, which essentially does, what it essentially does is a pattern text replacement. So it identifies predefined uh, text patterns, and it replaces with the label decoration combination with predefined. So for example, if I want to put a suggestion, I will just enter question mark followed by the first letter of the label. And then if I press tab, it will insert the label and the decoration combination. For if I want to put a blocking issue, I will put question mark followed by the first letter of the label I, followed by the first letter of the decoration B. And then if you press tab, it will insert the label decoration combination with the emoji as well. So. These are the predefined uh, text patterns uh, that I have in the browser extension. And uh, whenever, if you if you are using the browser extension and if you don't know what is the pattern, you can simply click on the pop-up and it will display all the predefined uh, text patterns and the associated label decoration combination. So what we achieved, leveraging the tools like GitHub saved replies and the browser extensions helped us integrate the convention easily into our workflow. This helped us eliminate all the challenges uh, we faced earlier. Now, uh, uh, the, uh, the author can eas uh, easily identify the type of the comment left by the reviewer. And we are easily able to prioritize the actions uh, because all the comments are uh, associated with the decoration. So the author can easily prioritize his actions. And we have eliminated the unnecessary back and forth communication between the author and the reviewer. Thus, we have streamlined communication, we have improved the readability, and we have increased the efficiency of our review process. So here's the QR code for the browser extension I developed. If you are interested in trying out conventional comments in your workflow, you can use the browser extension, and it will easily help you format your com comments in, in GitHub. Thank you for joining me. If you have any questions, you can. Uh, this is my email, and you can com contact me for any feedback or any questions you have. I think we have. Thank you. We have 20 seconds. Maybe if someone has a question, I can answer. Just one. No. It was clear. Thank you. Thank you very much.